Okay, so let's talk about creating and moving users to um, new uh, organizational units in PowerShell. All right, so our commands for dealing with organizational units. Let's do a get get dash command with a noun of see if I can spell organizational unit. And remember, whoops, AD organizational unit. That'll make more sense. Okay, so we have a get AD organizational unit, which will, as normal, get us information about it. New creates a new one. Remove gets rid of it. Set sets properties for an organizational unit. And it doesn't move objects to the organizational unit. It sets the properties of the organizational unit. To move an object to an organizational unit is something completely different. So. These are going to be our base commands for working with uh, organizational units. Now, let's create a new organizational unit. And so our command is going to be new dash ad organizational unit, not unity, unit. We need to set the name for it. And I'm going to call it, I'm in an enterprise or a Star Trek mood today, so I'm going to call it DS9. And then the other thing that we'll frequently set, and there's a whole bunch of options here, but we need to set at least a name. The other thing is when you do this in the GUI, it defaults to a setting that protects it from accidental deletion. So to set that in PowerShell, our option is protected from accidental deletion and then we're going to use the boolean value dollar sign true and that will create our new organizational unit now if i do the command get ad organizational unit and tell it ds9 it can't find it okay here's why it's not that our organizational unit failed to be created. It's that the get ad organizational unit command is a little bit touchy, shall we say. So let's do a get help for get ad organizational unit. And I'm going to pipe this to more. And for this, if we look at our get AD organizational unit, you see right here we have the option for identity. And it's asking for an organizational unit, not an actual name. We also have the option to filter here. Now, this is the same thing we ran into with the new AD user. The filter, notice it's not in square brackets, so I have to specify if I want to filter it. If I do just if I don't specify a filter, then it's going to assume identity. Um, so if I just type get AD organizational unit DS9, it's looking for an AD organizational unit object. It's not looking for a text string, and so it can't find it. So I can use the filter thing, and I can do the same thing that I did with the get AD user. Get AD... organizational unit now if I just leave it alone it says hey I need a filter so I say asterisk and it gives all of them including right here DS9 the other thing I can do again just like the get AD uh, user get AD organizational unit dash filter and then give it a filter that the name is like asterisk to see all of it or if I want to see just this one name is like DS9 and now it'll pull up just that one so it does create it for me when I did my we find my old command here new AD organizational unit DS9 expand this out a little bit so that all fits on one line it did create it for me it's just that the get AD organizational unit is a little touchy. Now, while we're talking about creating new AD organizational units, let's get help on the new AD organizational unit 
commandlet and I'm going to pipe that to more just so that we can look at all of our options here. So new AD organizational unit. We don't have to give it a name. It just will assume that the first thing we try to give it is going to be the name. And that's expecting string value, which is why we could just type DS9. We can also set the authorization type, the city, the country, the credential, a description for it, a display name for it, an instance, who it's managed by, any other attributes. The path, if we're going to specify, now this is key. If I want to create an OU inside of an OU, then I have to specify the path where the OU is going to go. If I don't specify the path, then it just puts it right under the uh, domain. In fact, oh, let's come back to that in a minute. You'll see postal code, you'll see protected from accidental deletion, and right here you're going to see it takes the Boolean value, which means we're using dollar sign $true, dollar sign $false. We can specify the server state, the street address. Okay, all of those things are fine. Let's go back to our get AD organizational unit filter with a name like DS9. Whoops. Get the right thing there. So now if I want to find all of them, I can do name like a, uh, asterisk as well. Notice this puts it in example.local and it's just right there off of example.local. So OU equals DS9. DC equals example, DC equals local. Now this is your distinguished name. This is a unique identifier for every single object inside uh, Active Directory or a distinct name for it. You can also use the object GUID if you want to, to uniquely identify the type of object. Okay, so we've created an organizational unit. Now, how do I get a user to that organizational unit? Well, let's start by seeing what users we have. So I'm going to do get ad user filter name. Whoops. Name is like, and I want to look at all of them. All right. Now that gave me a little more than I want. So I want to filter this, or I want to break this down a little bit. I want to look at just the name. So I am going to pipe that to format table or format table. There we go. And I want to look at just the name. And that's going to give me just the name of them. Now I've got myself and one of my sons here. By the way, the another formatting option. So we've seen the format table. We can also do a format list, which will give me just the all of the object in a list rather than in a table. Normally, I will use a format list if I'm specifying more things here that I want to see than will fit good or fit well into a table. The other option is I can do a format wide. And the format wide will do it this way. So it'll do columns spread all across the screen. Its default is two. You can set it for more columns. Um, but it will only display one property. Okay, so just a couple of fun ways to format. So I want to move my user, ddalton, into my new OU called DS9. Now, there is no move AD user. There is a generic command called move-ad object. So let's do, let's spell that correctly first. Let's do a help on move AD object. Now, here's a big thing. Notice right here, it's looking for the AD object. It's looking for an object, not a string value. The target path is also a little bit funky. That requires a string value but specifying these can get a little bit tricky because we need the full path for it. So I'm going to show you an easier way to do this, what I think is an easier way anyway. Okay, so here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to start by getting ad user ddalton. 
And remember with AD user, I can't do that with get uh, AD organizational unit because I've got more than one parameter set for get AD user. I can't do that with AD organizational unit, but I can do it for get AD user D Dalton. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to assign that to a variable called user. User equals get AD user D Dalton. And that'll take that entire object and store it in that uh, user variable. Now, the other thing I want to do is I need the path for my organizational unit. Now, here's going to be the what I think is the easiest way to do this. Get dash AD organizational unit. And I want to specify the filter for the name like, and I want to find my DS9. And that's going to find me my specific organizational unit. And now I'm going to take that and assign that to a variable called path. Dollar sign path equals get AD organizational unit. Okay, now all I have to do, let me go ahead and leave this on the screen, is move ad object dollar sign user to dollar sign path. Now if all works well, I can do a get ad user ddalton and now I am in ds9.example.local instead of just example.local. Now for me, that's easier. There is more than one way to do this. Another way that you can do it, to me this is a little more complicated, but you can do move AD object and then in parentheses get AD user filter. Now notice we're using the same command structure. Name is like J Dalton. and close parentheses. Now what happens is this will take the place of that dollar sign user here. And then I can specify where I want it to go again in parentheses get AD organizational unit filter name like DS9 and close parentheses. Now that is another way to do it. Uh, and basically what, it's just like algebra, what happens in parentheses runs first. So we run this, we run this, we plop those two values into the correct spot on the move AD object. Now if I do a get AD user J Dalton, we're going to discover that he is now in DS9 as well. Okay, what if I wanted to create a new user inside there? Well, I can do that too. Let me let take a look at my dollar sign path variable and make sure that's still set. Okay, so let me do a get help for new AD user. Pipe that to more. And we're going to see here all of our options. We've got to set the name, a whole bunch of other object options we can set. But down here, you're going to find dash path and that's going to be the location the path where you want this created or the OU that you want it to create it in so I've already got a dollar sign path variable already set so what I can do here is I can create a new AD user I'm going to create one called s Dalton and then I'm going to create I need to create an account password and remember, the account password has to be a secure string. And last time we talked about this, we did this using a convert to secure string function. So now I'm going to do that inside parentheses, convert to secure string, and then what I want to be the password, and I just hit the wrong key, one, two, three, four, dollar sign. There we go. As plain text dash force. Close that, and now I can go back to the rest of my command. 
So new AD user S Dalton set that account password. And I'm just going to, I'm not going to set the rest of the stuff. I'm just going to set dash path and dollar sign path since I already have that set. And hit enter. And now let me get AD user S Dalton. And here he is. Uh, S Dalton in DS9, notice the account is disabled. Remember when we do that, the account's usually disabled. So we enable it. We talked about this in one of our previous video. Uh, enable AD account S Dalton. And now get user, he's there, enabled is true. Okay, all that was fun. Now, can I get a list of all objects that are inside an organizational unit? Yeah, we can. And that is a just like uh, move AD object is a generic command that will move any Active Directory object, user, computer, group, whatever. Okay, we do the same thing with get AD object. It's a generic command to get information about AD objects. So it's get AD object. And then I want to set my filter. Now, this is fun. I can't do an asterisk here. Uh, it doesn't give me that option the way get AD user does. So I have to use my filter. Name is like asterisk. And then I want to specify where I want to look. So I'm going to use the option search base. And that says this is the base where I'm going to search from. Search base. And I'm going to set dollar sign path because I've already set that uh, variable. And I've been using it this whole video. So that's going to say go to that path, start that for your search, and it's going to find all 80 objects that match this filter name like anything in this particular path which is going to be OU equals DS9 DC equals example DC equals local so it's OS9 OU in the example dot local domain if I had a subdomain there'd be an extra DC there and so you'll see CN common name D Dalton J Dalton S Dalton all in DS9 for example dot local and the distinguished name gives a whole specified name. Name is just the object name. Object class is what kind of object it is. This one's an organizational unit. These three are users. You'll also see groups or computers. And then the GUID for it. Okay, so we've created an organizational unit. We've moved objects into a unit. And then we've created users inside an organizational unit.